Yeah, we're back live in the studios of WLCN, high up on Lazy Road, County Road 2250. You remember that, Mrs. Busby? I didn't even know that. Yeah, How well, could I remember I, it? I told you that last week. Start remembering what I tell you. Uh, in the opulent studios of um, <clears throat> Lincoln Country, our guest this morning, uh, Bridget Thomas, Director of Student Services uh, at Lincoln College, and our our soon to be retired for the second time, uh, uh, President of Lincoln College, uh, Jonathan Astroth. We appreciate uh, your coming up here, John. You've got a lot to do as, as your term wired down, and I appreciate that very much. So does Judy, uh, and I'm sure our, our listeners do too. And uh, Bridget, has a, she has a big and uh, active time out there with her professional uh, assignments at Lincoln College. So thank you for giving us your time. Um, just a quick side, I remember one time when I left Lincoln College, went over to Champaign to go to school, and I called my father one time, and I said, I'm out of money, Dad. And he said, well, that's funny. So am I. <laughs> <laughs> and that was the end of the conversation about money. And Billy was smart enough to know that they weren't going to go there anymore. He figured, A, that I had a tuition paid, and B, I had a roof over my head, and C, I was eating. And that's all I needed. If I needed some pocket money, I'd just have to hustle for it myself. Get so, a job. It's yeah. an old-fashioned way, right? Uh, <laughs> and we don't, uh, at our school, uh, we don't have, number one, a lot of kids who, uh, any kids, I don't presume, who work in the community as such. Do we, Bridget? No. No, we have students who ask for jobs out in the community. Um, we do have a couple, I can tell you, over the years that have worked at... Um, McDonald's, um, Walgreens, mm -hmm. because Ron Ackerman through Debbie Ackerman, the tie is there. Yes, uh -huh. um, and students <laughs> work at Walgreens. They have worked at CVS, um, Hardee's, but you know, other than that, um, mm. the establishments that are close to campus, such as you know the Thorntons and the mm -hmm. um, Quick and Easy, yeah. if not, you know, our students have not. And working there, it's difficult for them. Yes, um, it is. Very difficult. Mm -hmm. How about commuters, though? That would be a different picture. I should think that <clears throat> some of them would have work. I would assume that. Um, I have a difficult time answering that question because I deal a lot more with our students who live on campus. Who live there. Uh -huh. yes. Sure. Yes. yes. You know, uh, I'm admittedly very prejudiced about our our food services department there. I think we do a great job up there, not only serving what we serve, but uh, but the aesthetics of it and so forth. Uh, 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 holiday times, you know, they do a great job. Do you ever get a, uh, what a naive question, but I'm gonna go ahead with it anyway. Do you ever get any complaints from the students about our food? I do, mm -hmm. and I take those complaints and I listen to the students mm -hmm. and I usually go over and talk to the dining hall to Warren and Lauren and say, you hey, follow through. you know, yes, I do. Um, mm -hmm. And but most of the time it is over. Um, they would like to have some more fresh items on the salad bar uh -huh. uh, and Warren and Laura do a great job. They'll mm -hmm. provide that. They would like to have maybe uh, they love one complaint I have had throughout the years. They love the taco bar. Mm -hmm. Those students would have the taco bar five days a week. Mm -hmm. So it's those type of complaints. They're, they're wanting a little bit more variety, but mm -hmm. for the most part, those same students who say, hey, Bridget, I wish we had this or that, when they leave, come back to Lincoln to visit, they're like, wow, <laughs> the food, I didn't realize how great the food Very was. Very exactly right. So, I don't. Yeah. Grandson Jerry, I, he said, well, it's okay, you know. Well, he went away to, to Western. And he found out we were doing a very good job back here in Lincoln, <laughs> yeah. Illinois. So we do. Uh, uh, you know, again, a tip of the hat to it. Uh, Jonathan, as you um, and John Blackburn work together, and again, that's such a great, uh, the way it's coming down is so great to have this seamless transition from one president to another. Um, are there any particular unusual problems that, uh, that you're working together uh, on that uh, you want to wind up before you leave campus? Well, there's, uh, I wouldn't call them problems. There's, uh, first, we want to get the budget uh, oh where boy. it needs to be, yeah. which is always a challenge in, in a these times. So uh, uh, we'll get that done. Uh, but there are some opportunities out there that uh, I think I can be helpful with. Mm -hmm. uh, John and I happened to meet with the superintendent from Lincoln High School yesterday to discuss an opportunity, an interest of theirs in cosmetology. There are some state regulations that surround 
uh, how a career center like Lincoln Career Center can uh, operate or have cosmetology courses that we would need to negotiate, but uh, that's an opportunity to continue to build the relationship with Lincoln High School that was started about a year ago with the dual credit program. Mm -hmm. uh, another opportunity that I uh, have some experience with that I think uh, I'd like to bring John into it more and more fully is the uh, partnering with community colleges around us for bachelor's degree completion programs mm -hmm. for their graduates. Mm -hmm. uh, this happens now uh, through our normal campus. Mm -hmm. uh, it's limited and I think we can expand it to different populations of community college students and to different community colleges, mm -hmm. additional community colleges. So I happen to know, as you might imagine, uh, most of the players on the scene in yeah. the in the surrounding community colleges and one of the things I'll be doing is visiting each of those campuses with John to introduce him to the presidents of those institutions get him familiar with the campuses and <clears throat> talk about some of our shared interests in uh, helping their students have another avenue toward a bachelor's degree because a lot of these community college students uh, are working uh, they're not all going to pick up and go to Illinois State University or the U yeah. of I or Western or Eastern or Southern. Uh, so uh, an opportunity like ours makes a lot of sense for those students to complete a bachelor's degree. Mm -hmm. And you have several bachelor programs. Yes, we do. And we, that, yeah. Relatively speaking, yes. it, in the life of Lincoln College, which is considerable mm -hmm. 1865, right. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's, it's a new program. That's right. We have mm -hmm. uh, eight by my count, bachelor's degrees that we offer. Uh, one on the Lincoln campus, the rest through the normal campus, and uh, they cover the most popular bachelor's degrees, as you might imagine, business, for example. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, criminal justice is another one. So uh, these are popular programs for a lot of students and uh, uh, working with the community <laughs> colleges to pick up their students after two years makes all the sense in the world to me. So. Mm -hmm. Yes. And where would they go then from <coughs> Lincoln College's program, for instance, in business for an MBA? Well, one of the long-range goals of, of the <coughs> normal campus is to offer the MBA. Uh, but they could go to ISU if they wanted to go in residence. There, I think UIS now has an online MBA oh. program. So there are opportunities out there uh, for them. Uh, my son just completed an online MBA through a private institution out of Minnesota. Interesting. So uh, if you want to go the online route, there are plenty of those available. Um, but if you can go in residence, there's, there's options there too. Bradley, mm -hmm. ISU, a lot of places. Mm -hmm. You know, we have in a house out there some really dedicated uh, instructors out there. Uh, and I've worked with the two or three of them on some other projects, and it's not just a job with them. They are truly uh, dedicated to doing their job and trying to impart knowledge to their students. And another kind of an unsung uh, staff member, so to speak, would be our director of physical plant services, Rhonda Pyatt. Uh, now, the reason I bring that up is, and she certainly is a, a, a doing a great job in that department. In your position, uh, Mrs. Thomas, do you have to work uh, with uh, Mrs. Pyatt and so forth? Are the things come up with the students that would go through her department to get uh, resolved? Yes, I work with Rhonda <coughs> every day. Um, Rhonda helps me with any student request of um, something that in the room that's not working properly. Um, she also takes care of um, if we have any type of damage in the residence halls, um, we worked closely together with that to repair that, to get that fixed. Um, we also work very closely, I work with her very closely on student activities, um, setting up, tearing down for activities, you know, tables, chairs, wherever we need um, those items placed. And um, just generally overall she's a great individual to work with um, mm -hmm. she's very caring about the students I think she understands and we often tell each other that you know the students are the customer um, and that's just how the both of us work together mm -hmm. so we agree on that and question I didn't ever know and I've never asked this question uh, the students or residents are uh, uh, the, who live in their various dorm rooms is there a room deposit put down uh, 
by each student? Yes. Yes, uh -huh. every student must have a $125 room deposit, which is um, turns into their damage deposit. And a student must have that damage deposit for the two years that they are mm -hmm. a student living on campus, yes. At the end of their two years, then whatever money is left there um, is then refunded back if mm -hmm. the student's account is clear, mm -hmm. yes. Uh, your new building over there is <coughs> so impressive. Um, and we were talking the other day about uh, the museum. Well, we were we were over there, weren't we, mm -hmm. Sunday night? And um, I just wondered it, what your timeline is for moving the museum. It's a great museum. My mm -hmm. golly, everybody who comes to my house from out of town goes over there to check it out. And uh, it's it's wonderful, but. It's kind of tiny, you know? <laughs> <laughs> well, if, if you like the small version, wait till you see the big version. Yeah. Because, uh, I've seen the drawings from the design build firm that we're working with to move the museum, and it's really impressive stuff. Uh, the, to answer your question, though, the timetable for the move is spring of 2013. So I would say in a year, right. we'll be in the new space. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, uh, the, I'm sure that uh, we'll host a grand opening and uh, try to get as many people as are interested out in the new space because it will be something to see, no question. It and, it, and it serves mm -hmm. the academic programs of the institution as well. I don't want to neglect that. Uh, we've got a lot of faculty interested in using the resources of the museum in a broad spectrum of courses, so uh, that's pretty exciting. Lincoln has a lot, obviously in his lifetime, Abraham Lincoln, uh, to teach us about many things. And uh, a museum dedicated to his life in Illinois is a very useful tool uh, in the classroom as well as for the general public. Right. You know, it might be time, and I'm sure Mr. Ash would allow this for commercial, uh, that can't be done without uh, significant resources. And I would like to set, suggest to the folks out there in Etherland that uh, they might have uh, Aunt Boo or Uncle George or, or a mother and a father, uh, somebody they want to remember. Uh, that could be done very easily by uh, contacting our development office at Lincoln College. Uh, we could sure use the bucks. Absolutely. Uh, the bucks don't, they do not stop there. <laughs> we've got, we've got uh, a, a lot of uh, ongoing things on there. So uh, contact uh, uh, Mrs. Ackerman at the development office and we'd be glad to sit down and talk with you. Sure. Mrs. Busby, you start to say something. Go ahead, dear. I always am starting to say something. <laughs> <laughs> but I always got you off. I'm sorry See, about that. No, you do not. <laughs> no, you do not. Um, you've had several events in the new building that uh, have included the public. It's not just mm -hmm. for the parents and the students. And uh, what has been the reaction? Are they pretty impressed when they see the inside? And, of course... <laughs> On the outside is that fabulous statue. statue. I just yeah. love that. Yeah. We're wondering at the college, the comment I get from people uh, in the public who've mm -hmm. attended events in the foyer yeah. uh, uh -huh. the, where the museum will uh, be situated is, how, what are you going to do for hosting events now that this space is going to be taken in yeah. a year? And that's one of the questions that we don't have an answer to yet because uh, it's served as nice as it will be for the museum. It's been equally nice for just community Reception. events and receptions. Yeah, so uh, we're going to have to give some thought to that. Um, but uh, people are uniformly impressed by the Lincoln Center. The gymnasium part, the museum space, the fitness center, if they go upstairs and, and use that, that's now open for public membership. And uh, uh, I was up there last night with Debbie Ackerman, and there were a few uh, public users you know, in the center. So uh, it, it's a wonderful and versatile space. Well, and I've been up to that fitness center. It's a dandy. I oh, didn't yeah. realize that you'd opened it to the public yes. for memberships. Yes. And well, it's, it's a great place. Yeah. 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 It, it is. I can tell you from experience. It's just well, great, also, really you have a pool over there, not in the new <coughs> right. building. Right. Correct. The Scully Natatorium. Right. Um, and that is open to the public sometimes, too, is it not? Yes. Uh, I, I can't cite you the hours right now but yeah and we also have community groups that use it like young kids who are the what do they call them little link swimmers or something yes. like that you know the aquanauts or something 
so we try to uh, allow the public and the community to use facilities as we can make them available. You know, uh, my kids were on those AAU swim teams that <clears throat> practiced over at Lincoln College. And uh, my golly, I can remember that time of my life. I'd forgotten about that until you brought that up. Mm -hmm. I was sitting every Saturday in somebody's hot natatorium, <laughs> sweating, <laughs> watching them swim. <laughs> well, we've had the president of the college here, and he's not been able to stop the advancement of the clock. Uh, I, you're a little short on your duties here, Dr. Astro. Uh, we appreciate very much having uh, with us uh, Bridget Thomas uh, representing the students uh, and the student activity and student life at Lincoln College. Uh, happily, she's going to stay. Uh, this would perhaps be our Nano May with uh, Dr. Astroth on the radio here. Um, John, it's been a great run. And Thank we you. appreciate your, your being here. It has been for me uh, as well. Uh, not only professional, but on a personal basis. Yes, so, uh, uh, we always try to close the viewpoint with a quote uh, apropos to whatever the subject matter is of the day. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, tuition costs are rising and so forth. And the first thing you know, it's going to make education a lot more expensive than ignorance. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for viewpoint.